Paul Grzanski is suiting up for a long day of tree climbing and cutting. He owns and operates Paul's Tree Service, and business is really good for him right now. You get into this industry because you care about trees, not because you want to cut down every single tree in, in neighborhoods, but unfortunately that's kind of what we're doing now. As Grzanski wields a chainsaw, homeowner Chet Williams takes one last look at the three spruce trees that he's known for much of his life. He bought this house in Spinard more than 40 years ago. We had friends from, from Europe come over and they were, they were just kind of amazed. And they said, you have so many trees. And I thought, you know, I never really thought about it. You know, they're, they're part of the neighborhood and it's a shame. The crew with Paul's Tree Service will not only remove three spruce trees from Chet Williams' front yard, they'll also take down three trees in front of the house across the street. Then they'll move on to three other properties in Anchorage. According to the State Division of Forestry, more than 1.1 million acres of forest in South Central Alaska have been impacted by the spruce beetle since 2015. 30,000 of those acres are right here in the Anchorage municipality. Grzynski says he takes down between 30 and 40 trees a day. I mean, we're changing entire neighborhoods. If you drive a little bit north, you can see that there's practically no spruce trees left, and if there are ones that are left, they're already brown. So um, turn again got hit hard. That was kind of the first spot, and now it's creeping up hillside, so it's just a matter of time before most areas in town will be affected by it in one way or the other. Spruce beetles bore into the trees in the fall and start to emerge as temperatures hit 60 degrees or warmer. Once they start to fly in the spring, they'll find more vulnerable spruce trees to attack. So now the crew is racing to take down as many infested spruce trees as possible to help stave off the beetle spread. Even though Paul Grzynski has about a half dozen other tree service companies to compete with, he says there's plenty of business to go around. At this point in time, it's kind of, it's fighting a losing battle, to be honest, just because the volume of trees out there kind of supersedes any, any amount that the tree services can keep up with. Um, even with everybody just cutting spruce trees, it's still just, it's impossible to get all of them before May. Um, so we'll do it throughout the summer, but it's just one of those things that we just try to do as much as we can, uh, especially before May. Across town at the Anchorage Botanical Garden, education specialist Patrick Ryan is taking his regular morning walk through the forest. It's not just signs of spring he's looking for. There's also evidence that the spruce beetle has been hard at work here. Right here is one of the boreholes from the beetles. They're all over here. Ryan brings along some of his teaching aids, including a little jar of frass. It's the sawdust left behind after the spruce beetle bores into a tree. He says it's a telltale sign of infestation. And actually the perception, I think, is that all the trees are going to die. All the spruce trees are going to die. And that's not really true. And of course the beetle uh, thing is cyclical. Ryan is excited to find a small group of spruce saplings during his walk. He'll leave these trees here for now, but he may come back later in the season to dig them up, repot them, and in a few years, replant them in places along the walkways where other older white spruce trees succumbed to the spruce beetle. By the time that you know we notice that they're not in good shape, it's, that one's got to go. But as we see, there's, there's hope, there's life. For Alaska Public Media, I'm Emily Schwing in Anchorage.